M. Glon with the three months saying Maxi Paxi. Well, mate, it is time for Maxi Paxi to show us some Maxi Paxi magic. Let's do it. Semi finals of the European Pro Tour Weekly. They went up against each other in the Masters Coliseum a couple of days ago. That was a pretty convincing win for Rainer. Is today going to be different? We're about to find out. Oh, Kalazur to Zero Spirit. So it's Clem against Kalazur. That's actually kind of cool. Let's get it on. Round one. Fight. Bottom left side of Hecate. We are looking at the main base of the Prince of Denmark. The best Protoss player on this planet. Has he learned from that best of three that happened, give or take, three days ago? Sidestorm Gaming's Max Packs. And earlier today, I spent a little bit of time to resume that game from replay. The game that Max Packs had with Rainer on Hardlet. I asked Rainer if he wanted to uh, play it against me and I could resume it from replay twice. Rainer started laughing and said, sure. So we did it three times and he destroyed me three times and that was it. <laughs> that was the story. <laughs> Top right side, we are looking at the main base of our Italian stallion, Basilisk Rainer. Resumed from replay is a super awesome future and I still feel like it's not used as much as it should be used. The only thing that can be a bit annoying is that if games are long, it really takes a long time to get up to that point. So it's not like you can resume and do it again and do it again. Like it takes a couple minutes to set it up. But it's obviously a very fun way to play out certain scenarios. And it can also set a lot of debates to bed, right? If you're like, oh, I think I could have done this or I could have done that or that the other guy should have won. Well, just get your hands on the replay, resume the game from replay, play out the scenario. I tried it, but I'm no Max Pax, and I'm definitely not as good as Rainer. Thought I could just aim move him. Turns out it's harder than that, guys. Shocker, right? <laughs> just a bag of mini Burger King Whoppers. I've been live for uh, how long, guys? Three and a half hours. I only had a schnitzel today. That is all I ate. All this talk about Whoppers is making me hungry. I would truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart if you guys could stop. <laughs> I need to do a best of three and a best of five. After that, we can talk about whoppers. Very standard opening here for Max Packs. One gate, fast expand, very quick, well, very quick, quick Stargate. Adapt into Stargate even before Warp Gate got fired up. Raynor has a gasless opening at first. He doesn't seem to be too worried about getting his, getting his hands on quick gas. Makes me wonder if Max Pax would have two adapts early if there is something that he can get done with them. It's all about the economy. Every single drone that is mining gas early on is obviously not mining minerals. And gas is great for upgrades, but it doesn't allow you to expand. It doesn't allow you to get any richer in the beginning of the game. actually really surprised that uh, we've gone well not really surprised because it's obviously somewhat common that it's a depth stalker into oracle so rainer opens in a pretty damn greedy way because he starts up zergling speed legitimately late with this build but yeah obviously if max Pax only makes one adept one adept he's not really going to punish him for it uh, max Pax just says i'm going to counter your greed with my own greed and protoss players tend to expand very quickly in this matchup but this is very quick, even for modern high-level PvZ. They might meet in the playoffs in a couple of days again, might get some dumb builds here. No, I think it's a lot more likely that, even if they are worried about that, which I don't know, Max Pax has not been a player in the past who really hides builds. Like, if he thinks of something being great, he's just going to use it at any given moment. He actually beat Rainer once with a very smart Zealot all-in on data C and he just used it in like the semi-finals of the weekly the man did not care it was an ultra smart all-in nobody had ever done it before like that and I was like holy fuck that's awesome he won with it and he beat Rainer but then Rainer was just like well I rather see him do this now than in the ESL Europe regionals because then it could have been a lot more problematic and then when they did play against shot in the regionals Rainer won convincingly and was obviously familiar with the all-in as well but what you could see though 
is obviously that players will play very normal, very along the lines of what is currently considered to be meta. So and then it just comes down to execution. Not necessarily a silly build. I think both Max Max and Reyna will do their absolute best to win, but they might try to win in the most normal and standard way that we are used to when it comes to high level PvZ. Mm -hmm. You still think that Boanam would have won that game? Oh, well, I should resume it from replay. Have some fun with my man Boanam. We have a couple of oracles killing drones as the uh, depths do get surrounded. Uh, so the oracles killed three drones, but we lost all three adepts. Now adepts are not very useful units forever, but they are still somewhat useful. You know what's really funny, guys, is that when Max Vex plays against almost every other Zerg out there, he's always so in their face. He's harassing mineral lines nonstop with the adepts, with the main two oracles, with the side oracle. And I don't know if it's because he's a bit intimidated by Rainer's speed or skill or Rainer's vision. But against Rainer, he always seems a little bit more timid. And that obviously has a lot to do with who he's playing. But I wonder if that all comes down to the way that Rainer positions his units. Or yeah, if Max Fax just doesn't believe in certain things against very good players. But he believes in it against almost everybody else. Thank you to Fokure. I have no idea, mate. I'm just gonna go with AOG. Thank you, AOG, for the prime, and thank you to Hemrick B for the eight months subby. Much love. Thank you, thank you. A very casual six minute thirty eight second infestation pit going down on the side of Rainer. As Max Vex is just kind of standing there in the center of the map, just very focused on his own economy. Maybe he believes that being aggressive is just not the way against Rainer, because Rainer is going to have an answer for most of the things he will throw at him. So he's a lot more focused on his own macro and quick transitions and wants to win a different kind of game. Does have an Observer in the mix now, and with Observers it becomes a little bit easier to push back the creep. There was a safety stasis trap there on the left that's going to freeze a bunch of these Zerglings. That hive, though, is going to be so quick. <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned for Max Max. Because I have the feeling that he's going to work with gateway units for a very long time. And sure, he may get Storm. But we're still looking at Storm and gateway units. And then he's going to have to deal with Zerglings that have Adrenal Glands. If Rainer gets it. And uh, maybe Lurkers with both of the hive tech upgrades. Raider is on 92 drones and it feels that he's just not in any danger of dying at all. We are in an 8 minute game and the man has 92 drones. I have the feeling that if I play against the computer I cannot have 92 drones at 8 minutes. If you tell me Roddy get Hive Tech and 82 drones and 5 bases against an AI, I don't know if I could do it. Raider is doing it while playing against Max Packs and having a couple of safety links and having a couple of safety roaches. I can't imagine that this is the way. An uncharacteristically very slow and passive start between two of the very best players in Europe. And I just feel that this favors Zork in general. Zork tax up quicker, Zork expands quicker, Zork mines faster. When it comes to building more workers at once. But hey, wouldn't I love to be wrong, guys? I see Max Pax just put on an absolute clinic here. Hello, Multi. I mean, both of them are just mega rich. Max Pax is now already building a fleet beacon and two additional uh, Stargates. So we have double Forge, nine gates, single Robo, soon triple Stargate. We're gonna work on the arrow upgrades and just round up the tech tree. <laughs> Thank you, Doxer, and thank you to Distant X. <coughs> Appreciate you guys. Raynor has not one, but two Nidus networks going up right next to each other. So is it going to be Nidus galore? Hecate can be a very difficult map for the Zerg to actually get a Protoss out of there. Because like walking up these ramps and being forced to fight into these choke points can be very frustrating for a Zerg. I'm sure that Raynor had a scare or two in that previous game on El Sione against Harstam. 
So Rainer is going to try to get the job done, guys, with some lurkers in the main. There are a couple of cannons here, but you cannot have cannons everywhere. Max Pack sees the Overseer. Mm, this is going to be the first Nidus, I guess. It's very important, by the way, that Max Pax is not maxed out. Because if you're maxed out, you can't warp in any Zellos to deal with this. And we all know that Protoss players need to warp in units to deal with shit. First Nidus goes up in the main and will get denied by the Stalkers and the Triple Zellos. Second Nidus in the main, that is a close attempt, but that is also going to get denied. So no, cool idea by Reyna, guys. The double Nidus is not going to be good enough. He does, however, already have Lurkers now on top of this base at 6 o'clock. What have we got here? Another night is going up. Seems that Rainer is not in the mood to potentially play 25-minute games of ZVP after that long one against Harsim. Can Max Pack successfully clean this up? Do we have enough observers everywhere when we need them the most? And don't forget, there is always another chance for a new night to come online somewhere. At this point, the carriers are definitely just kind of doing their thing. We have plus one air weapons. Very important to stay on top of those air upgrades. We're 11 minutes in, mate. There you go. It's the beautiful thing about Max Press, guys. If you look at something that he needs to do, and he will do it. Couple storms land, a roaches die, and a few of the lurkers will deal damage. Max Fax is just trying to chill and play some late game, but. I mean, let's see. Obviously, you gotta try something. It is not easy. And I'm sure that we had something to say about whatever way that he would play this. If it wouldn't go right, we'd say, like, maybe it didn't go right there. And then, this game, it feels that the game plan is just get up to four bases quickly. Dig in your heels and build your dream army. Nice stasis trap there, by the way. Can we talk about how beautiful the map is? Those orange leaves over Magenta Abyss, Chef's Kiss. Linda, we can definitely talk about it. If you want to talk about how pretty Hecate is, feel free. You are not the only one who thinks that this is a very pretty map. So does Vicky. He's a big fan. Raynor does still have eight roaches, by the way. And obviously the uh, era of the roach is a little bit gone. Max Max has 6 carriers and Reyna at this point has only 14 Corruptors. Now 14 Corruptors can be good enough, but it all comes down to the engagement. If Max Max is able to land a sweet feedback or two, it may not be all that easy. Archons could have a big impact on this fight and don't forget about the storms. We are going to land the storm in the middle of most of those Corruptors, so that is a lot of damage. Will Max Max recall or does he want to battle here? I am not totally certain. Reiner is looking for another freebie with the Corruptors, but it's not going to be that easy. I think, honestly, uh, most of the maps are pretty damn good. I don't really have a problem with any of the maps. Two of them are weird, but weird is not bad. And I think this is the prettiest one, but pretty and good obviously are not the same thing in Starcraft 2 as the Corruptors are going to make a die for these two carriers. And they will kill them rather quickly. The mothership is going to use its cloaking ability, but there is very little to cloak. That was obviously not really the fight for Max Pax, as that was only like 30% of his army, but still a 30% that absolutely mattered. But hey, he has successfully taken out a base. He does still have a couple of leftover units in the center that are now going to battle. Some roaches and ravages. An Archon dies. It's honestly a little bit surprising. 14 minutes in, maybe it's time for this army to evacuate because now the Vipers and Corruptors are in higher numbers and they had some energy too. One of the carriers gets abducted. The Zealots do get another cancel, so that part is nice. The units lost resource step does show us, guys, that Raynor has lost 2.3k more. Like, that is a lot. The downside here, though, for uh, our man Raynor, or for our man Max Pax, rather, because obviously I don't think there's much of a downside for Raynor. Is that Reyna has definitely mined more than 2.3k resources as well. That's why Reyna's got a bank, Reyna's got an army. Working on all the upgrades. Perhaps Max Pax's game plan here, guys, is just one base at a time. Surprised that we still have Zealous in the mix here, but I uh, maybe create a bit of chaos as we have a couple of Archon stock. So Max Pax basically has three armies out on the map right now. We got that Zealot run by. We got a tiny hit squad of some random units in the bottom. 
And we've got a bigger army in the top. It's a very difficult way of playing StarCraft, but it might just be the way. Maybe Max Vex can actually just fight a smaller part of Reyna's army since the corrupt account is so freaking high at the moment. It is almost so high, guys, that I would say maybe we can just take a fight and try to kill as many ground units as we can and a Remax on the ground army. That is a crazy amount of Corruptors. A couple of Tempest would be nice. I never really believe in Tempest. I feel like Tempest will just slow the game down. And the moment you slow the game down, the Zerg is going to catch up in air upgrades. Now, Raynor is not even uh, that far behind because plus two Carapace is close to finishing up. While Max Vex is only now Chrono Boosting out plus three. So Raynor is definitely very, very on top of the Carapace upgrades on Inspire. I feel overall Max Vex definitely missed uh, a couple moments to get air upgrades out slightly quicker. But I don't know if in this game, with the way that he has played it, if that would have made much of a difference. Rainer has more army in the bottom side, and that's why Max Vex thinks that this is a, a fight that he wants to take, perhaps that he even needs to take. There isn't really a whole lot that he gains here. Meanwhile, all of the Corruptors are chilling in the middle. Slowly but steady though, guys. Max Vex is matching Rainer's expand uh, grid. As Rain had all the bases early, Max Vex kind of took it one base at a time, was on four bases for a while. Eventually got a 5th, is now trying to take a 6th and a 7th base. I have a hard time imagining that Rainer is just going to sit there and let it happen. It feels like it's a great game, but it, it still feels like we are waiting for all hell to break loose. It is definitely a very high level game. Because the, what they are doing right now, splitting up their army the way they have been doing it. And poking and prodding and a couple trades here, a couple trades there. Like You need so much confidence to play like this. It is very different than this keeping your entire army together as now Max Pax has decided to recall that army from the top left to the bottom right. And while Rainer is maybe a tiny bit out of position, Max Pax says this is the play that I need to get on top of that center base. Take out the lurkers, take out the sport crawlers as the mummy ship does get abducted. But hey, maybe it's already done its job. Those corruptors take a lot of damage. Is this the way, guys? With a great tactical recall. Where our man Rainer was a bit out of position, obviously because he had to worry about that army in the top left. As the storm does clip a lot of these Hydras, we have a bunch of Zealots just running past the Spines. I don't know if they want to fight the Spines. The Zealots do have good upgrades, and once they have these upgrades, they can do pretty decent against Spine Crawlers. But I think for us, it's time to focus on this army. We've got 20 Corruptors soon that are going to try to take out 7 carriers. One carrier takes a lot of damage and will fall. Second carrier is going to go fall, but look at the amount of damage that these Corruptors have taken from the Storms. I kind of believe that the Stalkers and the Archons guys on the ground are making the difference here in favor of Max Max. And Raynor is remaxing on 11 Roaches, 21 Hydras and a Viper. But those units are going to come from all over the place. And Max Max with a slow and steady absolute PVZ masterclass takes the 1-0 lead. I mean, that unit positioning there was, guys, was just perfect. I think Reyna technically had the right amount of Corruptors. But you look at these Storms, you look at the Stalkers that are just not being attacked by Lurkers or Brute Lords. And then you have a bunch of Archons on the ground. First, they were not in the fight. And here they started participating in the fight where you have the Stalkers shipping away at all the Corruptors. This Archon getting a lot of shots up. That is good enough for Max Pax to take the 1 0 lead. It is Monday. And on Mondays, Clem Max Pax is inevitable. I am impressed that Max Pax won that game, especially if you keep into consideration how some of the other PVCs between these guys played out that had starts that looked more promising. Yeah. That recall was sick, obviously, that allowed Max Pax to get that opening with a lot of the forces of Reyna still being in the top left. Sick. Not there yet, guys, but that was pretty good by Max Pax. Can't say it wasn't good. What is game two? Mm, game two will be played on Solaris. <laughs> it's funny because earlier today when I was uh, playing those games against Rainer and we were resuming them from replay, after he destroyed me twice, he said like, I don't believe in that spot. I think at that point the game is lost. 
And then he did tell me, he's like, I do believe in the Mothership Rico. Because there was that attempt on that Heartland game where the Mothership flew into the main, but it never got the Rico off. And Reina said, I do believe in the Mothership Rico. Well, it is funny that Mothership Rico is basically the key to victory here. Mm -hmm. A one elite for our Protoss, but he also knows that he is not there yet. Mm -hmm. Game two. Reyna obviously tried to make some aggressive moves happen once he was on 90 plus workers and he had a bunch of bases with the double nighters and whatnot, but. Could not break the Prince of Denmark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was incredibly well played. But it's only the first game of a best of three. Round two, fight! In the top right side, this man just gave us another replay. For anyone who out there, what is this? It's an early prop scout. I guess he just wants to block. Just another perfect example on why we have been calling this man the best Protoss player on this planet for quite some time, taking the one old lead because he wants to have a date with his favorite Terran in the Grand Finals of the Weekly. This is Sidestorm Gaming's Max Pax. Bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of the Italian Stallion, who has been trying to win a weekly. It turns out, guys, that it's a little harder than what it looks like. Down 0-1, this is Raynor. Made it to the finals of the weekly last month, uh, well, I, last Thursday, but obviously that one was supposed to be played on Monday. But that, pool, um, that cup got postponed because the servers were not working initially. And the week prior to that, Raynor actually lost to Mana. Mm -hmm. Not sure why he didn't go Broodlords, probably because he felt he needed those Corruptors to battle the uh, carriers. He could have had some Broodlords maybe a bit earlier and then throw away more army supply, but it's obviously very hard as a Zerg as well to figure out when can I get rid of certain units and when do I need other units. Especially when Max Pax has two if not three armies in the center of the map roaming around looking for an opportunity to get on your bases. If you give him an easy opening by donating a bunch, it can be the end. I know it was a fun game. Very high level. Uh, I wonder what kind of an adjustment Rainer will make heading into game two. Raider, most of the time when I watch him in these kinds of online cups, he will play one game the way that he just did, where it's like all out macro, let's get hive, let's get lurkers, let's get double nighters. And then the second game, he often switches it up and he just tries to go pedal to the metal of even lair tech with crazy amount of links, roaches, ravages, veins. Obviously, that's not a guarantee, but maybe that's also just having a bit of fun. Sure, there is money on the line, there are EPT points on the line, but. Reina doesn't need to worry too much about EPT points and if he would have cared about the 200 bucks that much he would have played this uh, a million times in the past, right? So, it could be that even though he's bringing his absolute A game, he's also still trying to have some fun. And it's also a good moment, right, to test certain styles heading into Katowice. There aren't too many Protoss players there, but there will still be a decent amount of them. Max Vax is not one of them, but I'm sure that Reina wants to know what he finds more success with. Is it the Lurkers? Is it Quick Root Lords? Or will it be just some good old lair tech aggression? This is definitely harder after the Baneling got nerfed. What happened to Gabe? Mm, Gabe is not playing and I don't know why. A lot of people seem to think that I'm Gabe's assistant. That I always know where Gabe is at, how Gabe is feeling, why he does or doesn't do those things. I don't know guys. I know that Gabe a while ago had some speeches on saying that he didn't really want to play in the weekly unless he thinks that he could win it. And he didn't feel that he was in the kind of shape to beat Clem or Max Pax, but that was a while ago, so I don't know if that applies to tonight. I don't know, maybe Gabe has a date with an 8. Who knows? And Gabe deserves a 10, but maybe it's an 8. Who knows? Hmm. 
machen. Trainer sees that Max Pax is going up to three bases once more. Obviously, last game Max Pax opened up. Um, Adept Stalker Adept. This game it was a little bit different as he hasn't made that Stalker yet. And he's focusing mostly on making Adepts. Let's see if there is an opening for these two Oracles. Double Oracle flies into the natural, gets the double kill. Maybe a triple kill here. Could go for that spore. Does not want to go for it with that many queens. So this spore is not done yet, so Reyna is going to be forced to pull the drones away again. Don't hate this start for Max Pax. Sure, he lost one Adept. But that's overall pretty smooth Oracle movement. Also, uh, Max Pax is very good at making it look easy to kill stuff with Oracles. I don't know if you guys ever tried, but Oracles suck to control. I never forget that we had that one IM Katowice where we started calling Trap the Wing Commander. Because he just made Oracle movement look so logical and fluent. And I was like, no! Phoenixes, they move correctly. That's why I love them. Oracles move in a very stupid way. They kind of like glide a little. And I guess if you practice enough with it, you'll be fine it. What happened to work on number three? Just send it on. <laughs> Did you guys know that Cristiano is the only non Max Pax and Clan player to win the EU Kips in six months? Cristiano is goaded, baby. Imagine if PVT was balanced, what he would be capable of. Mm. Mm -hmm. Rainer is gonna go for plus one melee with a lair on the way as Max Vex is already making some progress to the center of the map. All three oracles are still alive as he's gonna split off the adepts by the way. Two adepts are gonna shade into the natural that has some potential. I don't know if Rainer is on top of it. Of course Rainer is on top of it. He got the heads up there with those two creep tumors that were forward. So at this point he knows. Mm -hmm. Was he really dead there? Where? You mean the previous game? Yes. He was definitely dead. Roddy and Gabe are besties. I mean, I'm definitely good friends with Gabe. I don't know if I would go as far to say that we are besties. But he is going to run a tournament soon and he invited me, so I, I feel somewhat honored. Sixteen stalkers with plus one close to finishing up and a bunch of oracles in the back to keep these stalkers safe from link surrounds But link surrounds are inevitable if we are watching Rainer and I assume that recall is not available I think otherwise we would have recalled there Good news for Max Pax is that all three oracles live the bad news is that he lost a decent amount of stalkers there Stalkers are pretty expensive and zerglings are not I can't imagine that Max Pax was very happy with that but I also can't imagine that he had no energy at all to recall. Or maybe he really didn't. <laughs> that maybe he felt that if he recalls there, he's going to lose like four units regardless. So recalling or trading and trying to run home with whatever is safe. Once Blink is off cooldown, is going to be the same. I'm not totally certain. Rainer's economy is not looking too impressive. But Rainer does have a rich Vespian Geyser. He's going to go Mudas. Do we believe in Mudas against a Max Pax who already has five gates? It's not that many. Soon seven gateways with Stalkers with Blink and plus one done. Honestly, it's a little bit risky what Rainer is doing. He is definitely playing a very different game than he did in that game one. Mm -hmm. The War Prism gets uh, spotted by the Mudas, but we can also turn that one around to say that the War Prism spots the Mudalisk. So Max Pax does get a solid 10-15 seconds heads up before all of these Mudas are going to reveal themselves here. And that's going to make your life a little bit easier. That means you can warp in a couple Stalkers. Now two Stalkers is not really enough. You can blink them back to that battery, but I don't like that warping, by the way. <sighs> so the Mudas of Rain are actually finding some good success here. 15 of them out already. Do we have a way to make Archons? Not yet. Okay. We have a whole bunch of probes getting picked off, but obviously if Rain ends up losing five or so Mutalus, I would say it's kind of even. Max Pax is a four base Protoss, so you can build four probes at a time. 
Losing 13 workers, it's not pleasant, but it is something he can recover from rather quickly. And as long as there is no moment where this number right here is going to dip into like the 40s or the 30s, there's nothing to really worry about. Mm -hmm. Definitely pretty good Muta play, but... It's also just Lair Tech Zerk, and it's just a couple of Mutas. Rainer has now 22 Banelings morphing in the center of the map, and he's about to send it, but there are Stasis Trappies here for days, and I'm afraid that the Stasis Traps are going to be the most annoying thing of everything here for Rainer. There are so many of them, and he may split off one or two links to activate one or two Trappies, but there are just so many of them. Shield Battery Overcharge gets activated as well, and that can obviously make this very hard. My keyboard is dying, guys, in the middle of the fight. Can you believe it? I don't know why my, this is the second time in a couple of days that my keyboard is dying, so I couldn't zoom in or out. But I have kind of fixed it. The Mutas is still killing some probes, but in the end, I think Max Rex kind of handles this relatively well. There's something wrong with my keyboard. My lights are going on and off, and now it's completely dead. God damn it. This has never happened, and now it's happening for the second time in just a couple of days. Okay, I, th I want to take a break because I want to plug my keyboard in and out, but I also don't want to do that now because I could miss a potentially game deciding fight. I cannot rotate the taps anymore, but what I can do is show you guys this fight of a lot of links, bane links, and middle list getting on top of the triangle, and that is apparently good enough for Reyna to get the job done with some Lair Tech Zerg magic. Stupid keyboard. I'm pretty certain that whatever cable my keyboard is, that I think my PC probably has it. So I don't even need that little, that weird little plug thingy. Rainer says that he's going to go ahead and take a break. Now, if Rainer is going to take a break, I'll take a very tiny break as well. And then I'll be right back, guys, for game three between these two nerds. I'm going to take a look at the rest of the bracket too quickly. Uh, stats test. Anybody covering that... Uh TVT or is it already done? Is Clem is up 1-0 over Kalazur and based on the supply, he's actually winning game two. So the winner of this game will duke it out with Clema game three. No, I don't have a wireless keyboard. I'm old school. I have a dust keyboard. I'll be right back, guys. I will uh, not run any ads because I don't think I need to. Now let's hope that I'm right. Game three. Rainer is ready. I am ready. Let's do it. Winner will do it out with Claymore in the grand finals of this edition of the European Pro Tour Weekly. Did Inter just score the winning goal? I was just watching in my break. I missed it. Score is 1-1. One one. The decider will be Oceanborn. This could actually be a very long map. Maybe I should have run out. But... Final round. Fight! Top left side of Oceanborn, we are looking at the main base of the best Protoss player on this planet, winning that first game with some beautiful Mothership, Carrier, Storm, Archon, Stalker, Protoss Magic, Storm Gaming's Max Packs. And in the bottom right side, can he make it to the finals for the second week in a row and do it out with Clem once more and get his third crack at Clem in less than five days? This is Basilisk Reiner, the Italian Stallion. Rainer made it to the finals on Thursday because that cup got moved from last mon Monday when Battle.net did not work properly, which is why I was not here, by the way, last Monday. There was no tournament. We did it on Thursday. Rainer made it to the finals. It was close. It was 3-2 for Clem. 24 hours later, they played against each other in the Bastardus Big Brain Bouts. It was close, but it was 3-1 in favor of Clem. If Rainer wins this game, we'll see if it gets close again. Maybe he can go all the way this time around. Reina trying to get all of the ZVT practice in before Kato. I wanted to actually grab myself a drink and then I didn't do it. That's okay. So 
So Clem took out Kalazur 2-0 in the other semi-finals. I said that it looked like it and I guess that has been confirmed now. That's free Roddy. I will not promise you guys that but I can promise you to try to limit to the three minutes an hour that we need to do. Well need to do. Sort of need to do. Which Rainer are we going to see on Oceanborn? Will it be Quick Hive Rainer? Will it be more Lairtech Magic Rainer? Surprising that he won with the Lairtech stuff and he lost with the Hive, because I do think that Hive Tech Zerg is a lot better than Lairtech Zerg, but I guess if you have uh, a man like Rainer and you have his speed and his ability to multitask and find openings with the Lings and Banes and have perfect Muta movement, and it is okay. Mm -hmm. Hello, Pantless Skeletor. The day has been good. Masters Colosseum early today, in case you guys missed it. You didn't miss much. Out of all the days so far, this was the most one-sided day. A bit, little bit underwhelming. But tomorrow, I think it's going to be awesome. In basically 14 hours from now, we will be here. And we're going to watch four mirror matchups. But all four are fucking awesome. So, yeah. It's been a good Monday. It could have been better, but it's still pretty good. And I'm very excited for Tuesday. And let's see what the rest of this evening will bring. Max Pax's opening has been back to that game one opening where it is Adept Stalker. On Solaris he opened up with Triple Adept, Triple Oracle. Here it is once more Adept Stalker. Very quick Nexus. Even for modern day PvZ standards. You hope I cast it, Katowice. Well, earlier today we came to the conclusion that apparently I have now, if I get invited, done Katowice 10 years in a row, guys. And they said I should have got a Kato 10 uh, C award. Not quite the G5L, but... Casting the same tournament 10 years in a row is pretty crazy. ESL daily? No. It was a one-time off that we did it on Thursday. And Friday was the big rain bouts, which is obviously not the same. There's the European Weekly. No EPT points on the line for that one. But always a pretty fun show on the Friday night. So similar openings to what we saw on Hecate. It could have something to do with the size of the map as well, right? Where even though all these maps are kind of big, I do feel that especially Oceanborn is proper large. Katowice price pool may be a tiny bit lower than last year. I didn't actually compare them. But last year Katowice was the official world uh, championship for StarCraft 2. And this year it is not. So there will be another tournament that is bigger. But I think it is very similar. I didn't dive into it too much. All I know is going to be awesome. 24 of the best video gamers on the planet in Katowice. Says these two oracles will fly in. Take a lot of damage. Max Pax does keep them alive. That is the most important part. The fact that his two adepts get surrounded and he doesn't get a whole lot done is less fantastic. Where everybody lives now, anyone knows? Does anyone know, guys? If only there is a way to figure out where Roddy lives, right? Unless you would click on the profile and then you read the first line. I live in Zeitland, which is a very tiny village that almost nobody will know outside of the Netherlands. But it is somewhat close to the city of Rotterdam. Max Pax flies in one more time, even though one of these oracles was better than Bruised, that is not going to discourage him. Gets a single worker. As Max Pax once upon a time said when he was playing 2v2s with Kalazur, not totally worth mentioning. Revelation goes down on the Queens. Uh, Raynor is going to drop the Spire once more. Says, hey, it worked pretty well in the previous game. I'm going to go ahead and do it all over again. Now, this situation is very different because I feel like A, this Spire is quicker. B, obviously, this map does not have a rich Vespian Geyser. And C, Max Pax is not going for Blink and plus one like it did in that previous game. Instead, Max Pax is gearing up for some good old Zealot Archon aggression. And I don't know if Raynor has already figured this out. But without the Roach one, it should be very difficult to deal with this shit. As he does move the Queens very far forward. That is a good thing when it comes to dealing damage to the Oracles. That is a bad thing when it comes to maybe keeping these Queens safe. I think Raynor is in trouble. If Max Pax micros this properly, and if he plays it 
with heart and commitment. I don't see how Rainer's current army can really deal with the War Prism and Archons and Oracles. But Rainer is gonna try to show us the way. If a couple force fields go down, no ravages, by the way, guys. No Roach Warren obviously means no ravages, means you cannot take out force fields. And that means that these Archons, it is gonna have a pretty good time getting very sick shots off. All the Oracles now think of fighting. It is starting to look like there's a crazy amount of Zerk here, though. Where are the reinforcements for Max Pax? As he has a couple Zealots coming in. I'm gonna say it's a little bit late. We do have Zealots running into the natural too, but with the 38 extra links on the way, I actually think Rainer is gonna be fine here. Max Pax kept that War Prism so far back. It was obviously focused on the second Robo, and now that Spire is going to hurt so freaking bad. If Rainer has the confidence to build Mudas, that is. We are not there yet, as the revelation goes down. Max Pax is not done pushing yet. Maybe Rainer is still in a bit of trouble. I'm surprised that it went as well for him as it did. But that doesn't mean that he's uh, totally out of trouble. We have 10 Mudas come out. It's going to be difficult for Max Pax. Max Pax has to know. Because obviously what he was battling there was pure Queen Ling. There were no Roaches, no Banelings, no Hydras. So then all that gas that Rain has been mining has got to go somewhere. <laughs> Defending against Mudos, if you don't have any Phoenix and you don't have Stalkers with Blink, is so freaking hard. Max Pax's War Prism is once more gonna say hello to the Mudalisk. And that obviously means that A, he gets a little bit of time. He moves out immediately. I don't know though, but how are you going to end this game if you can't reinforce this army? Not sure. Rainer fires up 13 drones. Archons are going to try to greet the Mudas. Maybe Max Pax, his plan is just to immediately attack Rainer. But how much does Rainer have? 28 links, 7 roaches, 12 bane links. The Mudas are going to do a lot of damage on the other side of the map. Max Pax has well, a couple stalkers without blink. So this is basically it, guys. It really comes down to this fight. The two Oracles die very quickly. The bane links do a very good job in softening up the entire army. The Archons are going to die. And this is really starting to look. Like this will be another encounter between Rainer and Clem. Because Max Pax was not ready for the Mudas. I think if he would have warped in more Archons, more Zealots, right on top of the fourth base, he could have won that fight. He kept that warp prism super far back. He was always waiting for that moment where Rainer would show up with a crazy amount of units, but it didn't really come. But then by the time that maybe Max Pax figured it out, it was too late to really punish Rainer for the way that he was playing. So Reyna gets away with a quick Spire, and uh, even if Max Pax has 80 workers now, guys, no blink, very low Phoenix count. Might not be crazy bad yet if Max Pax somehow does not take damage in the next minute. And since Reyna has built so many drones, there is a small chance. Like if Max Pax makes it until like 11.30 without taking crazy damage, obviously the game doesn't look so bad for him. Because the Muda count is a little bit lower now than it was before, as the Mudas are going to try to chase another War Prism. At the same time though, 28 probes die, as Rainer says hello. Here are all the links, the Banes, the Roaches and the Ravages. So that not taking any damage didn't really work out very well. Hive is now obviously done. I'm not totally certain what Rainer wants to do with Hive Tech. We're gonna get Vipers first, and I guess Adrenal Glands would be useful. He's gonna fire that up quickly as well. And I, I don't really believe in a Protoss with only charge. This is it, it really limits the ability that Max Pax has. In a funny way, guys, a Dark Shrine would not be bad here. Because Rainer doesn't have a way to keep the Overseer alive, but the Phoenix count is not crazy high, and I don't think we're gonna see a Dark Shrine anytime soon. Rainer is looking for a surround, looking for a great engagement, and if that's not possible, he's just gonna keep on dealing damage with these Zarklings that have plus two melee. The Phoenixes are being annoying, but that is not uh, not good enough. Max Pax needs a little more than killing one Phoenix at a time, as now the shield batteries and the cannons have died, so early he lost 28 probes, 14 additional workers go down. Every single probe at that fourth base has disappeared. Another Archon gets picked off, and Rainer is just re remaxing on links. Roaches still, by the way, has these Mudas. No, there isn't. There aren't too many of them. He even kills the Nexus. I think Max Pax is kind of dead. Three base Protoss, 76 army supply, a couple Colossus, a couple Archons. 
It is unfortunately for the Prince of Denmark not going to be good enough. So we're gonna have a repeat. Over the grand finals of last Monday. That wasn't like Monday, but it was Thursday instead. A ZVT. Round 3 between Rain and Clam. Earlier today, Clem played a ZVT and well, TVZ in his eyes. And lost, somewhat surprisingly, against Solar in the Masters Coliseum. He went for a proxy 2 Rex in game 1. Was a little bit uncharacteristic. Clem, of course, did it against Saru in the WTL Code S Finals, but if you don't I think about that game, maybe ask me when is the last time when Clem went proxy 2 Rex in TVZ? I would not have had an answer for you. So the Clem almost never does it. Max Max is gonna try to get that fourth base up and running one more time. He's still just kind of stuck with his current comp of a couple of Archons, a couple of Colossus, and a couple of Phoenixes. Zealots have charge, and that is it. Yeah. What do we make of this game? I like how the Mudos is still alive. I can help out. It feels that this game is uh, not going anywhere. But I would love to be wrong. If Max Max was on like 75 probes, there is obviously always a chance. Rainer is now getting a second Spire, by the way. But he, he's not even using the other one, so I find that a bit weird. It's almost like he forgot that he has a Spire, because that first Spire isn't even doing anything. But if you still have five Mudas roaming the map, you should know that you have a Spire. And I'm pretty certain he does, but tiny bit confused. Or maybe Rainer just says, fuck it, I'm rich. And just in case, I have to worry about carriers. I can make Corruptors and I can get double upgrades. That is the third War Prism, right? We're gonna land a couple of Updocks, obviously. This Zerg army should do very well here. Battery Overcharge is normally the only thing that can really save you in fights that look very dire. Rainer is gonna settle for the probes rather than trying to blow up some Archons. And Max Pax holds, but not before losing a lot of expensive units that he has a very hard time replacing. Loses eight more probes. It was about as good for Max Pax as it was ever going to be. But yeah, he can't reinforce. He, maybe you have to go. Yeah, maybe he also feels that after taking a fight that good, he does not need to go. The next time around, though, it won't just be Lings and Roaches and Banes. It's going to be a whole bunch of Ultras as well. Maybe even more Vipers. As the leftover Mutalisk show up on the fourth base. I think one of the most telling stats about this game. Is that Rainer has killed 68 probes and Max Vex has killed 8 drones. You now have 10 Zealots running into Ultras, but that is not a pretty fight for the Zealots, so they're gonna have to disengage. You have Zealots running into Queens, not a pretty fight for the Zealots. I'll be honest, there is no such thing as a pretty fight for Zealots. Links with Adrenal Glands and plus 2 will decimate this mineral line one more time as we have one of these patented Ling run bys by Rainer. The doors are wide open in the natural. Fighting Archons near Battery Overcharge could get dicey as those probes I do think are in a bit of a pickle. So 25 additional workers fall. Maybe the Archons and the Colossus do alright against this ground army. Rainer's getting a greater spire on his Neil Spire, by the way, so not on the OG Spire. Maybe Rainer couldn't find his spire and he didn't know where it was. <laughs> I think that was a very different game. Um, Maples. Uh, yeah, you know that obviously. I mean, I know you're smart. Uh, obviously, that game Rainer was playing Hydra Link Bane and had a couple of lurkers without high tech. This game Rainer is a high tech sword. Max Pax has been able to do uh, at least a good job defensively, but that's also because Rainer is not going all out for the army. Rainer is kind of like battling the army and then killing a lot of economy. Battling the army, killing a lot of economy. That's why I think Max Pax's army has been doing surprisingly well. I think the moment that Reyna says, all right, I no longer go for your economy. I'm just going to go ahead and try to clean up your army. I believe that he will succeed. Uh, with the Ultras, though, it is always a tiny bit scary as the Phoenixes are going to lift the Queens in the back. There are not too many Immortals, and I think to battle this many Ultras, you need a crazy amount of Immortals. Two or three Immortals is not going to be enough. GG. It will be once more. Reiner versus Clem in the Grand Finals of the European Pro Tour Weekly. Rainer saw my meme and he took it personal. Now he's ruining our Monday night fun. Shame on Rainer, eh? <laughs> ah, well done. Good series. Um, 
fun to see Rainer find a lot of success with the Muras. I do think that in this game, if Max Fax with that first move out of the Archons and the Zealots, where he has plus one, so the Zealots are actually good against the Lynx. I think if that War Prism is a bit closer to the Archons and we can do War Prism Micro, we can warp in more Zealots directly into the fight. Uh, I believe there would have been a way, but that wasn't the case. Max Fax was obviously going up to four bases, building double Robo, transitioning into Colossus. I think for him that was more of a move out, test the waters, see if you can get some freebies. Not necessarily as in, I'm going to move out with Archons and Zealots and try to win the game. But maybe if he would have had that second approach, it could have gone his way. We're going to take a little break, guys. And then, well, uh, well, we settled the prediction, but I need to wait until it's over. Two, three minutes, and then it's time for another Grand Finals. The same one as the previous week. Raynor versus Clem. Will the third time be the charm for Raynor? It didn't work on a Thursday. It did not work out. In the best of this big ring bouts. It didn't work out either in WTL Code S. But that was a little while longer ago. Is today the day? Let's find out. See you guys soon.